Hi, I'm Rian Shilavir. I'm the Youth Parliament Member for Cardiff South and Penarth and I'm here with Hannah Blythen to talk about how Wales is coping with its littering and plastic waste. So I guess I wanted to ask you the first question is how do you think Wales is measuring up with different countries in the European Union or just in the Western countries in general in its aim of tackling littering and plastic waste? First of all, congratulations on your election you. to the Youth Parliament and I'm really pleased that the Youth Parliament has chosen looking at plastic and littering as one of your priorities because I think it's something which is really, really high in the public consciousness at the moment yeah. and we know that if we don't take action on plastic pollution, one of the figures that startles me that by 2050 there'll be more plastic than fish in our ocean. Mm -hmm. So in terms of where we are in Wales, I think we can be really proud of where we are as a nation. Um, we're number one in the UK when it comes to recycling, second in uh, Europe and third in the world mm -hmm. and we've done that through some of the measures that we've put in place in Wales and the policy interventions we've made but clearly you know we want to be number one in the world and we know that plastic pollution and littering is a problem we know it kind of blights um, our communities and our seas so which is why we're talking about how we can take the next steps to get us to that next level as well. So what do you think has been your most influential legislation in terms of tackling plastic and litter waste? I think you know we, we we can be proud of the legislation we've got in place in Wales from the Environment Wales Act and the Future Future Well Future Gen Wellbeing of Generations Act. I think we've got groundbreaking legislation, but it's about actually how we put that into practice as well. So um, uh, the Wales Waste the Waste Wales sorry measure 2010. Um, brought in the statutory ta targets, which we're the only nation in the UK that has statutory targets for our local authorities to meet in terms of their recycling measures. Yes, yeah, so we're not, we have not just placed it, um, uh, higher expectations on our councils, we've actually worked with them through funding and support to actually enable them to actually um, to, to, to get us to that point when we are the number one recycling nation in the UK as well. Um, so obviously you mentioned that the climate in and around environmental activism is like really changing and it's really prominent um, especially over the last couple of months. What do you think about the recent climate strikes and do you think they're a good idea? Do you think more people should get involved? What, do you think they're going to enact changes? What is your general overview of that? Yeah, I, th I think you know one of the things that struck me is that you know our politics over the last couple of years has been dominated by discussions about Brexit, which mm -hmm. as you'd expect. And I think one of the big things that has cut through is people taking action and speaking up on climate change. And you, know, you, you often hear young people being criticised for being apathetic and then being criticised for taking action. Yeah. And I think you know it's really important to see young people and that we support people to be um, both engaged and empowered. Mm -hmm. And I think you know you, you do need, you know, I, I, I'm a politician now, I guess, and I still find it strange to say those words, but I became a politician because I was an activist and a campaigner. And it's really important that people are there to to put pressure on government too, but actually to work with us. Because mm -hmm. I think the only way we're going to get to where we need to be is actually by working uh, collectively, because not only, you know, it's not just about legislation, it's about us changing our individual behaviours as well. Do you know what you're aiming to tackle next uh, with the government in terms of littering and flatting waste in yeah. Wales? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we want to, we don't, we're not complacent. We want to, we know, you know, we need to continue to do more and build on the work we've already done. So one of the things we've got at the moment, we're looking at um, introducing possible deposit return scheme okay. and also extended producer responsibility. So extended producer responsibility is actually, you know, we focused a lot now on recycling and, you know, we should be really proud of how far we've come and, and the contribution citizens in Wales have made to that. But actually that's looking at products at the end of life. So a lot of people now talk about you go in the supermarket, excessive packaging, yeah. packaging that's difficult to recycle. So what extended producer responsibility will do, will look at actually how those producers take more responsibility for the waste that they produce. So it's in line with the polluter pays principle. Yeah. And then the deposit return scheme, it's, you know, it, it's something that's a, um, a number of other European nations currently do, which is places a deposit when you um, pay a little bit extra when you buy a, say, a plastic bottle, um, a glass bottle, a, a can, um, and then when you return it to a, a return point or a reverse vending machine, then you get that deposit back. But I think for me and that is. I'm really keen that we make sure that we make it work with what we're already doing in yeah. Wales. So like I said, people are, you know, most people are really, really good doing their recycling at curbside, getting it collected, but actually, you know, how are people going to feel about then having to take some of that back to a collection point actually to get their deposit back as well. So actually how we work with communities and all stakeholders to make that work best for us in Wales. How do you think, you know, in terms of, you know, we're, we are proud to be number one in the world when it comes to recycling. Um, how, how would you say we could get to that next level and actually how do we get more people engaged and involved and that message out there that is a really, you know, we're not just doing it for the sake of meeting targets, we're doing it because it's the right thing to do. I think it's just about talking to the public and telling them that we are listening to them and we understand that you are concerned about 
um, certain aspects of environment and littering plastic waste. I think it's also about just telling people what they can do because I think it sounds silly but I think a lot of people are confused about what can be recycled yeah. and what can't and just educating people on just little things that they can do I think will make a big difference and it will also I think show encouragement to the government to say that look the things that you are implementing people are listening to and people are willing to get on board of those things and push them to the next level. Yeah I mean that's, that's something that's been raised with me quite a bit in terms of people still being unsure what they can and can't put in recycling mm -hmm. I think you know that's why we have kind of um, awareness raising campaigns yeah. but also the extended producer responsibility will also look at actually how better labelling for products too so people are clearer what they yeah. can and cannot recycle. I think that's a really good idea just so you turn it over with because you have all these symbols and it's obviously really easy to tell people what they are but if you just print it you know recyclable then I think just making it easier for the public to get involved is I think will go a long way. And do you think we should look more at actually how not like we say not just a you know the end of life when you recycle something but actually how we keep things in circulation more and well so we reuse things more? Yeah I think so and that's not also a good thing for uh, littering and plastic waste it's also a good thing for the economy and maybe it's a good thing for big producers to get involved in. I think it, it just creates like this circular, like you said, a circular flow of input and output. And I think that's a great idea because it not only gives the incentive for people to recycle, but it also gives them a reward for it. You know, you can get other things from bringing back your plastic rather than just knowing that you've helped the environment. You can also have a personal reward from that. You said about, you know, actually getting big producers involved too yeah. and, you know, local authorities provide services. I've always said it's really important, you know, we've got a role to play as government, but, you know, it's up to everybody to take action from grassroots to government and everything yeah. in between. I think one thing when we look at now, we move to a deposit return scheme, which is why I'm working with local authorities and retailers and producers to actually, so during the consultation stage, we take all that into account so we actually said we get a system that works for us in Wales as well. It's one thing asking individuals to make differences and I think there's been a lot of change you know um, in people using reusable straws and I've seen a lot of people starting to reject plastic bags and everything but um, like it's always comes back to the big producers isn't it because it's one thing to ask the public as individuals to do their part but in reality there's only so much that individuals can do until it needs to be pushed on to bigger companies and bigger producers to make their mark and I think the deposit return scheme is a really valuable way of doing that. I think one thing to say that you know individuals and households in Wales are now pretty good at yeah. when it comes to recycling sorting out our waste so one of the things you know we were saying before about what do we do next so um, we will be also be consulting under what's part four of the Environment Act to actually um, place the same responsibilities on business and organisations yeah. to separate their waste for collection. So that's something you think would be... I think so, definitely, because, um, you know, as me personally, I feel a lot of pressure to cut aspects out of my life, but then other things like I can't avoid doing, but every little thing that someone does will amount to something bigger. Yeah. But by involving the bigger people in the first place I think the changes will be dramatic. Like you said we've all got a contribution to make and our, our small contributions adds up to that bigger collective yeah, effort doesn't definitely, it? Definitely. Well thank you very much for meeting with me it's been really interesting to see how the government's tackling this issue and I'm sure that a lot of young people out there will be very grateful that I've had this opportunity to speak on their behalf. It's a really, really enjoyed um, meeting with you as well. I think it's really good what the Youth Parliament is doing on this. And actually, you know, it, it's so important that um, our Youth Parliament members are leading the way because actually government taking action on, on waste and litter is actually, it, it's in the interest of future generations. So um, I really wish you the best of luck of it. And I, you. You know, anything else I can do to, to, to help the committee and the Parliament going forward, then don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.